what we're trying to do here is understand cognitive decline and the molecular basis of it so that we can also test out possible therapies. And this is based on the notion that uh, the genome is in fact rather plastic and um, that the environment can interact with it at different levels, such as, for example, DNA methylation or protein modifications, um, um, including, for example, histone acetylation. And um, histone acetylation in particular um, is known to, um, to cause certain conformational states that are more or less amenable to transcription. And this balance between acetylated and non-acetylated chromatin um, is controlled by a set of enzymes um, called the histone acetyltransferases and the histone deacetylases. And um, as mentioned before, the environment can interact um, at this level with this uh, balance, but also the, um, there are certain disease conditions, such as, for example, age-associated cognitive decline or Alzheimer's disease that can also cause um, an imbalance in this, in this process. Um, and there's also a way we can intervene um, externally uh, by using certain compounds, such as, for example, HDAC inhibitors. Such an HDAC inhibitor is, for example, Saha, and this is the molecule we've chosen to work with for our study. Um, the use of HDAC inhibitors for um, treating cognitive impairment diseases or conditions um, is not new in concept, um, but what's really crucial to what we've done here is the fact that we've um, given the Saha in drinking water, as opposed to virtually all the studies before who, which are using um, much more invasive methods such as um, systemic injections or intracranial injections. Um, and if we really want to make a step towards the clinic, a significant one, then um, being able to show that the drug also works when given orally is really crucial. Um, and so what we've done here is um, we've taken um, a model of cognitive decline, namely old animals, uh, and we've treated them with V-cold or with Saha. And um, one of the first observations we have is the fact that animals treated with V-cold Old animals treated with vehicle um, are impaired in a particular task, the more water maze, um, but when they are given Saha, they um, are able to perform this task um, almost as efficiently as their young counterparts. And in terms of histone acetylation, in particular histone 4 lysine 12 acetylation, we also observed a reinstatement of um, acetylation levels, which are reduced um, in old vehicle treated animals. Um, at the level of gene expression of transcription, which we analyzed by using RNA-seq, um, we observed a um, very big uh, transcriptional response in old animals. Um, and we were a bit surprised that we did not find within down-regulated genes a lot of synaptic plasticity terms. Um, and instead, we found a lot of metabolism and transcription terms, which when we looked at more in detail, uh, we found had to do with um, splicing, in fact. And so we went and looked at splicing more um, in detail, and um, we found that aging is associated with um, a very massive deregulation of splicing, which is brought to complete normality after treatment with Saha. And this is a very new concept, a very new finding, uh, associating also, for the first time, HDAC inhibitors and, um, and um, splicing. This being true, at least for the brain and at the genome-wide level. Uh, and so to, to prove this concept and go a bit further, we've um, done a series of experiments, um, this being one where we injected an inhibitor of splicing, namely uh, splicestatin A, um, and we saw that animals injected with this compound are unable to perform in the Morris water maze. However, animals co-injected with Saha and this inhibitor uh, fall somewhere in between, which is telling us on the one hand that splicing is essential for cognitive performance, um, and on the other hand, it's telling us that Saha is interacting with, um, with um, this mechanism at some level, even if it's, of course, not the only mechanism by which it may be contributing to reinstating cognitive function. And um, so to put it in a nutshell, what we've shown is that Saha, when given in drinking water, can reinstate 
cognitive performance, transcriptional balance, acetylation, and um, alternative splicing. This in aged animals. And um, we have somewhat similar findings in AD mouse models, um, but slightly different with a slightly different spin. So what we found there is that um, the pathology of, um, of AD animals, although um, it, uh, it concurs with cognitive decline as well, um, is fundamentally different because, for example, at the level of gene expression, um, we found that um, there were many synaptic plasticity terms that were deregulated, as opposed to um, in H animals, where these terms only came up in the, um, in the splicing. And in fact, for AD mouse models, the um, splicing deregulation was associated with malfunctioning cytoskeletal um, um, dynamics. And so what this is telling us is that, um, yeah, the mechanisms of disease progression are fundamentally different and that we should really consider this when trying to design therapeutic intervention strategies um, uh, for, for different kinds of diseases. Um, and just to sum it up, what we've provided is um, well, significant evidence um, at many different levels as to how Saha may be impinging on different, on different molecular, molecular phenomena um, that um, likely underlie the cognitive decline that we observe. And so we believe, for this reason, that Saha is a very suitable drug to treat um, cognitive decline, and we are convinced um, that it's worth it to move it into a clinical trial.